So over here we have some Audi magnetic ride shock absorbers. We'll demonstrate them and we'll test them and show you what they look like when they failed. But if you look at this one here, it looks perfectly fine. There's no traces of oil or anything similar. So nothing at all. Everything looks fine. However, I'll show you when these leak. Someone has previously wiped this and this shock has actually failed. And you can't really pick that up until you actually do a bench test. This is some, a simple test which we'll show you now. So we just put it on the ground and now all you have to do is just push on it and just watch the resistance. So with the weight of an average person, half the weight of an average person, it's just compressing and it's not even, if you look at it, it's compressing down and it's just bouncing straight back up. Some of you all might be saying, but it's not energized. Which is true, when this is back on the vehicle, I'll show you that as well. However, just by this, regardless if it's energized or not, it's not, it's not catching the rebound and it's coming up extremely quick so you saw what happens there so now this top hat has been removed so this top hat has been removed this is the nut that holds it on and this is the electrical cap now this cap here is where the electrical connector goes into this part here just over there most of the time you can try and get it off cleanly but they do break and these are very expensive these caps that's the part number if anyone needs it this is our off an Audi S3 and this is the part number of an Audi TT just over there 8JO part number so anyway we'll so with this with the top head removed this bump stop if we lift it up you can already see it so this is the problem a few other places what they normally do is they'll when this leaks here and when you wipe it you're not going to get much of a leak because most of it's already gone so this is what it looks like when it's leaked so notice here the, the fluid is all over there and eventually just drips down and it's leaked so we'll test this one and i'll show you what that looks like as well this is a Definite fail on the shock. So as you can see, it's just compressing with no force at all. And this is the other one. It's just got a slight weep on it. So if you look here, there's only a slight weep on the rod here. So this one is still okay. This one needs significantly more force to push it down. And notice it returns a little bit slower coming up as well. This one, if you look at the force needed, it's just not compressing all the way down like the other ones were. So that's, I would say, a known good. So out of but all three of these, this is the only one that seems to be okay. There's different part numbers because this this is an S3 one. But technically they should all be the same. We'll just do a resistance check on the coil and I'll show you that now. But apart from that, this is just a brief summary of what goes wrong with these shocks. There'll be a lot more coming in the near future. A bit more in depth on the shocks when um, the vehicles have moved and we will show you the test mode on the sports button as well so just over there you've got the two connectors so so that's an auto range of multimeter so if you go ahead and just touch the two probes there generally it's about the 1.2 ohm so the coils about 1.2 ohms and this is why when you use the about one ohm plus or minus so you just saw from that resistance check when we use a delete kit 
in 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 replacement of this electrical shock over here that delete kit normally is some sort of coil type resistor or something of that sort but it has to be something of high voltage because 30 amps is what the control module supplies to all four shocks and it splits them up so there's a lot of heat that's generated here because of the the coil system so hence the reason why it's generally quite a large unit large resistor and why they do burn out as well a lot of people remark uh, have remarks on those saying that they burn out because of the heat from them so thanks for watching everyone and stay tuned for the upcoming videos this cap removed we'll just show you we'll touch one end and i'll just show you where the electrical connector is or connection is so notice that there that one to that one over there so that's the body of the shaft that we just measured now we'll measure the internal so this will be internal positive to the coil and it's that first one to the square that we're measuring there so that means in theory if we hold this lead here if we hold the ground here and the positive just goes in the center we should be able to measure the coil on the shock and as you can see it's about 1.3 exactly the same what we measured before and for reference, that's where we're measuring, just in there and there. Just in case anyone else needs an extra bit of, uh, extra bit of info.